Howdy again everyone, and it's time for some deja vu as I test out an alternative version of Fuji's excellent 56mm portrait lens, the Fuji XF 56mm f1.2 R APD. This APD version of the lens has a special appetization element inside of it to try and make the lens's bokeh a bit smoother. Perhaps you can spot in this picture that the edges around the image circle of the APD lens look slightly darker. We'll take a look in a minute at how much that APD element really does improve the lens's bokeh, but I should mention a number of other side effects it has first. Firstly, although this lens still has a narrow depth of field of an f1.2 optic, the intensity of the light that's hitting your sensor is darker so your shutter speeds will be slowed down. And you can see a guide for that around the lens's aperture ring, so f1.2 is letting in the same intensity of light as f1.7, f1.4 the same as f1.8, and so on. That disparity continues down to f5.6, where the effect of the APD element has worn off, and the lens behaves normally again. So, if you're someone who's desperate to shoot in the darkest of conditions and get fast shutter speeds, you may prefer the original lens of this APD version. But again, just to clarify, you're still getting the narrow depth of field of an f1.2 lens, the same blurry backgrounds. Secondly, the APD element inside the lens is hostile to phase detection autofocus systems and so your Fuji camera will have to rely on contrast detection autofocus only, which will slow down your camera's autofocus a bit, as you can see here. And finally, Fuji are charging quite a lot extra for the APD version compared to the original. It costs about £300 more in the UK at over £1,000, and it's about $500 more in the US at US$1,500. So, that's quite a number of considerable downsides. The improvement in this lens's bokeh had better be impressive. Well, let's take a quick look at the lens's build quality first. It's the same as its less expensive non-APD brother. Solid and metallic, but not too big, and weighing over 400 grams. Like its older brother, it doesn't have a weather sealing gasket around the rear, but it does have that nice clicky aperture ring, and a smoothly turning manual focus ring. Like its older brother, the manual focus ring isn't amazingly responsive in use, but it does the job. And also, the lens doesn't have any problems with focus breathing, which is always helpful. As I mentioned before, the autofocus on this lens is a bit slower and less confident than with its older brother, and on rare occasions I found it would fail to focus altogether. The focus motor does make a noticeable whishing sound as it goes around. It's not very loud, and it won't disturb you in normal photography, but video makers might find that annoying. The lens has a 62mm filter thread, and comes with a generously deep hood. Overall, the build quality is pretty much up to spec for an XF lens here, although you will probably notice the reduced performance in autofocus. When it comes to image quality, I found the APD lens's performance to be just as sharp as the older version. It's excellent in the middle of the image, straight from f1.2, and very good in the corners, getting sharper as you stop down to f2 and f2.8, with great contrast levels, and remaining this sharp down to about f16. So, I didn't really see any difference from the non-APD version of the lens in terms of sharpness. How about distortion and vignetting? This is normally corrected by your camera for you, but here are some raw results for you. Like the non-APD lens, distortion is very minimal. The APD lens does seem to have just slightly less vignetting than the non-APD lens, but it's still quite noticeable at f1.2, so stop down to f2 or f2.8 to see it reduced, or just leave your automatic corrections turned on. Let's see about close-up image quality. Just like its brother, the lens can focus as closely as 70cm to your subject, and image quality continues to be excellent that close, straight from f1.2. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights. Just like its brother, it's not a great performance here. We see rather a lot of flaring when bright lights are in or around the picture. It's essentially the same performance to my eyes. 
And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, Bokeh. Let's see how it compares to the older, cheaper lens. The first thing I should mention is that the APD element seems to be a weaker one than that found in other APD lenses. For example, this Venus Optics lens loses about one and a half stops of light from its APD element, and this Sony lens loses a huge two stops of light from its very strong and very softening APD element. But the Fuji lens we're testing here loses less than one stop of light, which made me initially suspect that it won't have a very strong softening effect on Bokeh. Well, let's see now. The Bokeh on both the non-APD and the APD lenses is reasonably soft. You can see some small differences with the APD lens. For example, the Bokeh outlining here looks just a little softer on the APD lens, although not by much. In these pictures, we see only a small improvement in Bokeh softness. The APD lens still has some outlining issues, unfortunately. And here's one more example. We can see a tiny improvement in Bokeh here, but the outlining there is still fairly strong on the APD lens. This is where lenses with apodization filters should really be making a difference. So, the quality of the APD lens's Bokeh is very nice, but sadly, not much of an improvement over the original lens. And frankly, that was a bit of a blow to me, because having reviewed the normal 56mm lens in all its glory, I was so excited to see what this APD version might be able to do. It seems clear to me that the APD element in this lens simply isn't strong enough to make a sufficient difference to justify the drawbacks it presents you with. Loss of light intensity, slower autofocus, and a considerable increase in price are, I think, far too great a price to pay for such a small improvement in the softness of this lens's bokeh. Now, I know my conclusion is going to annoy some people, as the lens has a lot of happy owners, and that's fine, but I would honestly rather have the non-APD version of this lens. I think for 99% of people, it would be the better option.